Today's hearing showcased the efforts of the Americans before us to stand up for democracy. Mr. Rosen, Mr. Donahue stayed steadfastly committed to the oath they take as officials in the Department of Justice. On January 6 itself, they assisted during the attack while our commander in chief stayed silent. Their bravery is a high moment in the sordid story of what led to January 6. My colleagues and I up here also take an oath. Some of them failed to uphold theirs and instead chose to spread the big lie. Days after the tragic events of January 6, some of these same Republican members requested pardons in the waning days of the Trump administration. Five days after the attack on the Capitol, Representative Mo Brooks sent the email on the screen now. As you see, he emailed the White House, quote, pursuant to a request from Matt Gates, requesting a pardon for Representative Gates himself and unnamed others. Witnesses told the select committee that the president considered offering pardons to a wide range of individuals connected to the president. Let's listen to some of that testimony. And was Representative Gates requesting a pardon? Believe so. The, the general tone was, we may get prosecuted because we were defensive of you know, the president's positions on these things. The pardon that he was discussing, requesting, was as broad as you could describe from the beginning, of, I remember he's from the beginning of time up until today, for any and all things. He mentioned Nixon, and I said Nixon's pardon was never nearly that broad. And are you aware of any members of Congress seeking pardons? I guess Mr. Gates and Mr. Brooks, I know, have both advocated for there to be a blanket pardon for members involved in that meeting and a handful of other members that weren't at the December 21st meeting um, as the preemptive pardons. Uh, Mr. Gates was personally pushing for a pardon and he was doing so since early December. I'm not sure why. Uh, Mr. Gates had reached out to me to ask if he could have a meeting with Mr. Meadows about receiving a presidential pardon. Did they all contact you? Not all of them, but several of them did. So you mentioned Mr. Gates, Mr. Brooks. Um, Mr. Biggs did. Mr. Jordan talked about congressional pardons, but he never asked me for one. It was more for an update on whether the White House is going to pardon members of Congress. Mr. Gomer asked for one as well. And Mr. Did, Perry asked for a pardon too. I'm sorry. I need to Mr. Well. Perry, did he talk to you directly? Yes, he did. Did uh, Marjorie Taylor Reed contact you? No, she didn't contact me about it. I heard that she had asked White House Counsel's Office for a pardon from Mr. Philbin, but I didn't frequently communicate with Ms. Green. Are you aware of any conversations or communications regarding the possibility of giving Congressman Matt Gates a pardon? Um, I know he had asked for it, but I don't know if he ever received one or what happened with it. How do you know that Congressman Gates asked for a pardon? He told me. Uh, tell us about that. He told me he'd asked Meadows for a pardon. Were you involved in or did you witness any conversations about the possibility of a blanket pardon for everyone involved in January 6th? Uh, I heard that mentioned, yeah. Do you know whether the president had any conversations about potentially pardoning any uh, family members? Um, I know he had hinted at a blanket pardon for the January 6th thing for anybody, um, but I think he had for all the staff and everyone involved, not with January 6th, but just before he left office, I know he had talked about that. The only reason I know to ask for a pardon is because you think you've committed a crime. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.